Hi, and welcome to day three of your chakra poses that we're doing for your chakra cleanse. Today we're going to be doing three poses once again. Today we'll, uh, we're going to start with a bridge pose. We're going to move into boat pose from there. And the last one we'll do is um, bow pose. <laughs> I'm a little forgetful. <laughs> So uh, Christine is going to turn backwards just for the bridge pose so we can show that angle on how your shoulders are planted down to the floor. So we're going to lay back onto the back. The feet are going to be coming in relatively close to your buttocks. If you can touch your feet, you know you're close enough. Uh, if you can't touch your feet, don't worry too much. It's okay. Uh, we're going to take the feet so that the heels are in line with your sitting bones. So if you're not sure where your sitting bones are, you can feel around down there, you'll feel them. <laughs> we're gonna lay right back. We're gonna tuck the shoulders under so the shoulder blades are pulling onto the back. And then we're gonna be lifting through the hips. So Barb is showing an option here where she's sitting on a block. And this is a great option if you are have any discomfort in your back uh, and you can't go into a curve like this. Otherwise, I want you to lift your hips enough that you can see and look over your knees. Hands can, if you like, interlace underneath the back to get that deeper opening through the chest. And uh, if Barb wants to, she can adjust that block to come up higher and still have that rest on the block. If you have the hands interlaced, you're going to really press into your upper arms and hands, opening through the back breathing with sound. I want you to try very hard to let your buttocks muscles go here. I know it's not easy. We want to squeeze them. And we'll take two breaths. You've got your wide open respiratory system here. And we're working through that, uh, the chakra located right between the, uh, the ribs at your diaphragm level. So this is a great place to think about that yellow energy swirling at that area, your sacral chakra. And then if your hands are underneath the back, we're going to untuck, untuck the shoulders as we lower the hips down. Take a breath right there. Let's draw the knees into the chest just to oppose that. Take two breaths. And then we're going to either roll up up to seat it, or you can turn over onto your side and then push yourself to seat it. Either option will work. Uh, so we're next going to go into boat pose. Boat is all about abdominal strength and core work. So as you come into your boat pose, I'm going to show you several options for, for it. Uh, so let's start by just lifting one foot from the floor. And as you do this, I want you to think about really bracing through your abdominal muscles. Again, we're getting into that sacral chakra, that yellow golden energy. Isn't it the solar plexus? Solar plexus, yes it is. Sorry about that. I just thought, did I get it wrong? No, you didn't get it wrong. <laughs> so we're thinking about that sacral, um, I keep wanting to say sacral now, solar plexus chakra. And if you like, you can bring both knees up. Hands can be underneath if you like, or they can extend up front in your boat pose, Navasana. The feet can come up higher. That's a lot of work. So if you're new to yoga, you want to keep probably one foot down or keep the hands behind the knees. Another option in this pose, how are you guys doing? <laughs> Is to take a strap around the shoulders and around the feet. And what this does is allows you to completely relax into your boat pose. Ooh, I didn't tighten that enough. <laughs> And you can just sit into it, breathe, get a little work through that abdominal, through the core, pull up at your pelvic floor right here, and then release your feet. And take that strap away. And I'd like you to just pull the knees in, hug yourself, and then round your spine and maybe drop your forehead right to your knees. Nice deep breaths, thinking about breathing through the back body. Thinking about that golden energy flowing right through from the diaphragm to the back. Take two breaths right here. 
and then we can sit up nice and tall and we're going to turn over and have, lay on the belly so as you come onto the belly put that over there get there in whatever mode of transportation feels good for you <laughs> We're going to take the toes together, take the heels apart, and we'll just start in what's called Makrasana. This is a resting pose. So you can make a little pillow with your hands, lower your forehead to that pillow, or one side of your face, whichever is most comfortable for you. Take two breaths right here. And then we are going to lift up into Sphinx Pose. We're just getting ready for a back bend here. So when you come into Sphinx Pose, I want you to think about your, uh, your elbow being directly underneath the shoulder. Hands are parallel to each other. And the middle finger, once again, is parallel to the outer edge of your mat. We want to pull back through the shoulders, breathe with sound, and target that, that chakra that I keep saying wrong. <laughs> So we're flexed, they all know. <laughs> and then we'll just release it back down. From there, we're going to come up once again. And we're going to move into a pose where we're taking our left arm parallel to the front edge of your mat. And we're going to reach back for the right foot, ankle, or this is another place that a strap can be used. So if you're using a strap, you just bring it right around the foot or ankle and you start to bring the arm more forward so that your, your shoulders are still parallel to the front edge of your mat. And this is going to stretch through your quadriceps and your uh, hip flexors. It's also going to start opening up in your back as we come into a back bend. And here I want you to really focus on pushing your hips into the floor and dropping your tailbone down a little bit. So you're starting to engage your abdominal muscles here. And then release that foot. We'll just do that on the other side before we get into our bow pose. And then reach back for the left, wherever you reach. Remember a strap, a tie, uh, anything handy that you have around the house can be used to catch your foot and bring it in. Shoulders are staying parallel to the front of the room. And we breathe. Couple of breaths right there, again, dropping the tailbone towards your heel, your back heel, that is. And releasing that foot. You want to come back down into Makrasana. Again, either one side of the face or your forehead. You can wiggle your hips out here if that feels nice. Sometimes it does after coming into a back bend. And then we're going to move into bow. So this time we're going to be reaching back with two hands. So hands are going to come back to ankles or tops of feet. I want you to think about flexing through your toes as you point your feet. So they're really active. Pulling back through the shoulders, pushing hips into the floor, pushing the tailbone toward the back of the knees now, and then coming up by pushing hands into feet, feet into hands, and coming into the version of the pose that suits you best. So we aren't all contortionists. <laughs> Probably none of us are really contortionists, unless there's somebody from Cirque du Soleil watching us today. You can come into the back bend that feels the best for you. Remember, this is all about this solar plexus chakra. And if you like to rock, you can start to rock like a boat, side to side, front to back, sorry, not side to side, <laughs> front to back. <laughs> and then releasing the feet once again, nice and slow as you come into that and move back into your Makrasana. Again, if you like to wiggle those hips side to side, please do. And we'll end it there today. Thanks so much for joining us.